One motto for the Virginia Education Association is that what is good for the teachers is ultimately good for the kids. And probably for most Virginians, there would not be an immediate rejection of, or revulsion, of that apparent logic in that statement, as we generally presume that a person who has both the appropriate age and experience and maturity is probably better able to address issues in that area of expertise. Just like many assume that Dr. Fauci, as an epidemiologist who has served under many presidents in their administrations, as the director of the NIAID Research and Development for Medical Technology, although an epidemiologist, and does not look to the eye like a new kid on the block, has to know what he is talking about. And many hearts, most recently across America, were touched. Recently when he announced that he and his grandkids will be practicing social distancing for the holidays because of the pandemic. An emotional appeal, but not science as much as human psychology. Similarly, anecdotally at least, as distinguished from empirically or based upon a rigorous analysis of evidence and logic because of the great advances in technology and accessibility of vast amounts of information, probably most Americans, maybe even yourself, would agree with the general statement that the kids today are so much smarter than we were when we were kids their age. But as responsible adults, we might add the caveat that these developing minds may have a deeper grasp of information or data they may not yet have the experience that brings wisdom and understanding to fully discern and apply the knowledge that they possess in one sat word from the past that might be used to describe the children of today is the word precocious we all wanted to be precocious as children and one of the most intriguing encounters with younger children is to discover that child, like one in the Bible, at, who at least held the belief that he or she knows better than us as adults about what is going on. And sometimes they actually do surprise us. And while empirical data suggests that the age at which most children stop believing in Santa Claus, an empirically established fantasy for most of us, yet still taught by 70% of parents, believe it or not, to their children, is around the age of eight. Finding about 85% of children in America still actually believing in this fantasy and fable they were taught by their parents. Smaller studies conducted with children suggest that you had better watch out, better not pout, better not cry when you raise the topic of St. Nick with children because a lot of them have already debunked the myth before that age. I still recall when I was around the age of eight, actually being so intellectually curious that I had actually uncovered empirical evidence to bust the mythology and was urged by my parents to continue the illusion so as not to spoil the Christmas season for my less discerning siblings. The things we do to keep the of the family, uh, peace in the family around the holidays. Still, in every year in which less people are even taking the trouble to set up a Christmas tree. A traditional family experience around the holidays pre-pandemic, but requiring a lot of close personal contact within the social distancing guidelines promoted by Dr. Fauci and Dr. Northam, it is very difficult to get into the celebration of Christmas without at least some of the allegedly antiquated codes and ideas of religion. Even in America, where 78% of people at least acknowledge being Christian, but maybe a little bit ashamed in front of scientists. Even if not faithful in attendance at the over 318,000 Christian churches that had existed before the pandemic, or now with one in five gone into extinction, it may come as a surprise for those in the faith to discover that even beyond the 30 to 125,000 Jews for Jesus 
worldwide in a total population of around 6 million, still a recent survey of Jewish millennials born between 1984 and 1999 actually found that a third of all respondents had a Christmas tree at home. And 34% who said belief in Jesus as the Messiah was compatible with being Jewish. And 42%, that's a lot, celebrate Christmas. More astonishingly, perhaps to some 83% of Jewish Americans have apparently lost faith in the prophecies of Isaiah regarding an immaculate virgin birth with over 83% supporting abortion on the question of whether believing in Jesus is compatible with being Jewish, however, those who have not graduated from college are more permissive than Jewish college graduates. 48% of Jews with a high school diploma or less education and 38% of those with some college say a person can be Jewish even if they believe Jesus was the Messiah, compared with 28% among college graduates. Still, according to 2013 Pew Research Study, 60% uh, of Jews in the United States believe that a person cannot be Jewish if they believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, so now, when you approach your Jewish friends and you want to be inclusive and sensitive, remember that not every Jew is actually offended by the thought that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus was born in Bethlehem or anything like that. And so this way you're a little bit more informed and you don't look stupid when you're trying to be sensitive to your Jewish friends. On the Christian side, a poll conducted back in 1999 of 103 Roman Catholic priests, Anglican priests, and Protestant ministers, pastors in the UK found that about 25% did not believe in the Virgin birth. Priests. Yet 97% of the same group do not believe the world was created in six days. 80% do not believe in the literal existence of Adam and Eve. Another poll in 2002 of 140 Church of England Anglican uh, clergy found that 27% do not believe in the virgin birth. And according to Pew Research, those who actually attend church may not go as far as the papal doctrine of infallibility but are certainly willing to grant deference to the authority of their pastors and presume uh, that they are expert on these topics to instruct them on matters of faith. And it may, and also some other social and other issues, and it may disappoint some of the more progressive persuasion and social justice and everything else to learn that most Americans actually believe that if they had to guess, their pastor would probably be a Republican. So it may be a good thing for a Biden administration, presumptively, at least for now, to keep those churches closed because that guy sitting around talking about 45 in the pulpit, his congregation may believe that he's a Republican, according to research. Some may not know that over 55% of Jewish Americans attribute their Jewish identity with a shared ancestry and culture. And that by ancestry, I am actually among the 97% of Jewish Americans in ancestry and culture who take pride in being Jewish. And my great grandfather actually escaped the Holocaust migrating into the United States through Ellis Island around this time of year for family. And about 49% of us Jewish Americans accept as part of our identity a highly developed intellectual curiosity, which may come of some assistance in a time in which even scientists are baffled by a single strand of RNA wrapped in a sheath with crowns that has managed to infect over three million Americans and has been attributed to the deaths of a quarter million. So, for my fellow intellectually curious Jews and other precocious children, in age or faith, who can manage to bust the myths of even Santa Claus more easily than Charlie Brown's sister with Linus waiting for the great pumpkin in the pumpkin patch, and who yet may find some doubts in the high improbability of an immaculate virgin birth over 2,000 years ago. Let's for a moment just close our eyes in a somber crisp 
Christmas prayer of peace and joy, good feelings. Filter out the noise of political elections and partisan bickery. And even the sage counsel of the doctors and scientists. And like young truth seekers, simply look at the empirical facts with our own eyes for examination. Regarding this novel corona, coronavirus that has separated families, separated families, and gotten them to assent by what is apparently their free choice, albeit in reasonable apprehension of grave bodily harm or death. Kind of like extortion. Even if you did not already know that to be even just an infectious disease, there has to be at least a 20% secondary infection rate among tracer contacts. You don't know that. Just during this holiday season, while you are separated from loved ones, standing together six feet apart, especially your older relatives who are the most vulnerable to this lethal pathogen by statistic and may not be around to celebrate with you next year or when the pandemic is finally over. Ask yourself what is the probability that a pathogen that the largest pre-pandemic tracer contact study over in China, over 55,000 laboratory confirmed cases, patients and their tracer contacts could not even find a 5% secondary infection rate among tracer contacts and could not even find an infectious disease. How likely is that going to cause you to infect someone else? amongst your friends or family at Christmas with or without a mask. Think about it empirically. Use the science, use the mask. Even if you did not know that in 1982, the laws of science on super spreader events was definitively settled by scientists and determined that the necessary precondition for a super spreader event was not just the existence of a communicable and infectious disease or pathogen that could be transmitted from person to person like the measles, which can persist in the air for up to two hours as an aerosol. And as one of the most infectious diseases harmful to man, can enable an infected person to infect 90% of their close personal contacts. What is the probability that a pathogen found in the largest tracer contact study to date, testing over 3 million laboratory confirmed cases in India just before the president was infected could actually set off a super spreader. Like Dr. Fauci says, if its attack rate in that largest study was only 10.7%, less than 20% that is required for just the existence of an infectious disease. Pandemic is not a general condition, but just a statement that says that something is present all around the world. And somebody just telling you that it's highly infectious without giving you any numbers is a little suspect, especially if they are a scientist. Or do you still believe in Santa Claus because your parents said so? Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Season's Greetings, Happy Holidays and Happy New Year. And wishing all the peace of mind through wisdom and discernment, if not faith. My name is Major Mike Webb. And by God, I am running for governor of Virginia. I ask every Christian, every conservative, every Republican, every Virginian, and every American to like the motto of the infantry. Follow me, and we shall overcome. Honest. This advertisement was authorized by Mike Webb.